Hello, I'm Peter Forenza and welcome to Q, uh, QP TV. And I'm joined today uh, for this Anzac Day uh, special presentation by Warren Nathan. Warren, tell us a little bit about your involvement uh, to this point with Anzac Day in Geraldton. Good morning, Peter. Um, my involvement actually started with the RSL 15 years ago when I arrived in Geraldton as a young bloke, or a younger bloke. Uh, and over the course of those years, I've sort of had a bid as uh, a committee member. Um, I've been an active member of the RSL here in Geraldton. I've played a couple of um, roles on Anzac Day uh, as a speaker here and there. And this year, um, I was privileged enough to be invited as the Master of Ceremonies. Uh, with the current restrictions, that's not likely to happen this year. In fact, it's not going to happen this year. Um, but it's still very privileged to be involved um, throughout all of the things that happen in regard to not just Anzac Day, but all the other commemorations, Long Tan Day, NAIDOC Week, uh, those kinds of things that happen through the RSL uh, network. Yeah. Okay, uh, Anzac Day uh, has a history and uh, it's, an, it's a very important history and uh, you being a, a New Zealander know that as well too, don't you? Yes. Um, Anzac Day for me falls into an everyday category. The importance doesn't break down to everyday stuff, but the way I see Anzac Day, we commemorate it on the 25th of April every year but as a, on a personal note, I commemorate Anzac Day every day of the year. I commemorate those who have gone before us, not just in uniform, not just men, not just women, but everyone who has gone before us, uh, those who, the, the mothers of soldiers, the, the fathers of soldiers, the, the wives of soldiers, sailors and air, airmen, or air women as it is, my mother-in-law, uh, Royal Air Force. Um, so I think of all the people who have compounded their lives together across time to create what we refer to today as our legacy. Anzac Day embodies all of that for all of us. But Anzac Day, in my opinion, isn't about 1915. You're a, an ex-serviceman, though. It must have, be, uh, have, have a, a certain significance for you. Yes, it does. Uh, from the day I joined the service, uh, I joined in the, in the January of um, the year, and come April of that year, it was the first official time we had ever been mustered together as a group of men um, to attend Anzac Day commemoration services. And I was 16 at the time, and it didn't mean so much uh, as it does now because there were too many other outside influences going on. Move here, get there, stand straight, stand tall, and we were numbers on a parade square. But as time wore on and we got to mingle with uh, veterans from various uh, return service associations in New Zealand. We went to veterans' homes. When I say homes, homes for veterans. So there was a, uh, a little place in Levin in the um, North Island of New Zealand, uh, and they were all uh, veteran soldiers who had no homes of their own, and they were built in a room in a complex that was the Levin War Veterans' Home. So we went to places like that and listened to the stories that these people had. And in those days, I'm going back 40 years now, there were stories vivid from both wars because we had people that were alive from both wars. And very sparsely today do we see that number of stories being told at any RSL or RSA uh, because time, as we know, wears people on and um, eventually they pass away. And quite often, their stories pass away with them. But those stories, as I heard as a young man, they rang true. And oftentimes, I, w I felt left out or, or 
jealous. I don't necessarily see the things the same way these days, but the importance of what they did has grown on me. How important are the other stories? Uh, you say now we don't have the storytellers, but how important is it to keep those stories? Very hard question to answer. The stories themselves are echoed in modernity. If we think about the the more, most recent uh, veterans that we have, they have their own stories that have a similar vein. And the stories in themselves, like a good novel, I think, have a way of engaging you to the romance of why we are gripped by the thought of the commemoration of Anzac Day. An Anzac Day is the day that we pin to all the morals that we have. Morals, I don't know is the right word, but of all the thoughts that we have about uh, heroes, of all the thoughts that we have about courage, of all the thoughts that we have about freedom, of all the thoughts that we have about bad people, uh, of all the thoughts that we have about uh, uniforms, they all sit in a little group and the cherry that's on top of that little group is Anzac Day and it all falls out of that. So the stories about individual exploits, they allow us the understanding of who people are. And they're no different today. You've got uh, the recent royal, Harry, who has created Invictus Games. We, we then get to see in real life what we didn't see two, three, four generations ago. World War Two, World War One, when all these soldiers came home with no legs and no hearing and blind and ears burnt off and all those sorts of things. Well, now they're back from modern times and they're competing and they are part of normal, everyday life because we've turned them into that. We've allowed them that freedom to remain part of normal life because they left their shore part of normal life. Why can't they come back that way? And those are the stories that are important to all of us, to the young ones. Um, I was thinking about the young ones earlier and they don't have, like you and I, the ability to reminisce. They don't have a history yet, whereas you and I as adult men have a history. We can reminisce on our times through life. But our times are also involved in telling the young ones our stories. Warren, I often think of Anzac Day and, and even, say, um, um, other days that you've mentioned there that commemorate a different, um, different aspects of, of war throughout time. As, as, a, as a time where I, I tend to feel humble, I remember being in Melbourne one Anzac Day and it was after the, the, you know, the, the, the great Anzac Day football clash between Essendon and Collingwood. And we were in Richmond with some friends and we went to a, a pub, the Cricketers Arms, I think it's called, and we waited outside to get into the, uh, into the pub and these um, young, young uh, veterans they were that came along, um, what made me so humble is that they were younger than me but had, had served for their country in either Iraq or Afghanistan or somewhere in the Middle East and um, you know, had all their, these medals on them. And it was such a humbling um, experience for me. And I think that that's important too, don't you think, for, for young people to, to have that hum, humbling aspect and, and realising how, how people have continued to do what's right in our world in, in the way of, of, of travelling overseas um, to, 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 um, to secure peace. Yeah. I say yeah on its own, but I... I actually think, and please don't be offended at all, I, I don't necessarily think humble is the right word. If I was to put a word on the same situation, I would see the word, the right word, being proud. You had 
and I'll use your story, you had the privilege to be able to stand there and look at these young veterans and put yourself into a position where perhaps there was a, a, an ideology of being humble, but you actually have no need to be humbled. They are no better than you. They just chose a different path than you did. And they were, in my opinion, amply rewarded for the path that they chose. As a veteran, that's how I see it. So when people are looking or in the confines or in the, the arm's reach of someone that they are almost um, enamoured by, you can feel that humbling experience, but I'm saying that you shouldn't. You should be proud that you're with, within arm's reach and you should be happy that they, that they are within arm's reach because they came home safe. I, I have a, uh, a very deep-seated thought process about Corporal Ben Robert Smith, VC and Bar, uh, VC. And uh, I say to myself, there's a guy who, if I stood next to him, he's actually no better than I am, but I'm very proud to stand next to him. There was a gallery that came to Geraldton uh, a couple of years ago, and it had all the VC winners, and I have a picture in my phone, one of 16 f pictures that I have in my phone. I'm not a phone guy, but the, the third photograph that's in my phone is me standing next to the framed picture of Ben Robert Smith because I'm proud to be standing next to that bloke. I'm not humbled by him, but I'm proud to stand next to him. It's like I'm not humbled by my father, but I'm proud to stand next to him. I know what my father is capable of, and I'm proud to stand next to him because he's my dad. So that's how I see your story. You know, and, and you're proud to be standing next to those blokes and perhaps having a beer inside the cricketer's arms when you finally get in the door. I don't know. No, I think you've probably put the, uh, put the um, real feeling probably that I did have. Uh, I suppose that leads us now to what sort of focus we should have on Anzac Day this year. It's, it's, a, different, it's a different beast this year, as uh, we said at the beginning of this conversation. You were, you know, all set to to MC, uh, say a dawn service or a, or a, a, a eleven o'clock service here in Geraldton, with with perhaps thousands of people. I've been to the recent dawn services, and there's thousands of people that that get up to to uh, to go out into the uh, the streets uh, of of Geraldton in the early morning to commemorate Anzac Day. That's not happening this year, but the focus itself. Um, what what should people be be thinking, and how should they be focusing? Do you think, Warren? People want to recognise what Anzac Day means to them. And part of what we're doing now is a recognition of what Anzac Day means to us. And I'll tell you a little story about my wife. I, when my, my wife's in the story and she's a very good conscience for me. Um, but I got a phone call from the president of the uh, RSL here in Geraldton, Barry Stinson. And he advised me um, that the meeting for um, the coordination of Anzac Day had been cancelled because Anzac Day had been cancelled, or the parade, the, you know, the service had been cancelled. And I immediately said over the phone to him, I'll be at the Cenotaph at six o'clock. Well, as things have unfolded, there's a movement going around that people are going to stand at the end of their driveways and they're going to... Um, pay their respects in that manner. Uh, there's a group of people who have um, declared that they're going to blow their trumpets, as it were, and they're going to play the last post. A and all of those things are absolutely great. <laughs> the conscience comes in, my wife comes in, when she reminds me that what we have taught our children, always do what's right even though no one is looking. And to that end... I live at the end of a road. There's no houses further on the road than mine. 
and I'll be in my driveway at 6 a.m. having my own piece of Anzac Day 2020 because her conscience says, do what's right even when no one is looking. And it doesn't matter where we are. If I'm at the end of my driveway and no one sees me, I don't care. I see me. I look at my face in the mirror and I know I've done the right thing. So to me, the focus for Anzac Day this year, I can't tell people what their focuses should be. I know what my focus is going to be. It's going to be no different than it is every other day of the year. To remember those who have fallen. But on the 25th is the day that each of us has the opportunity to mark it without interruption. There are two days that are very special to me. Uh, the 11th of November at 11 o'clock. That's very special to me. And I mark that wherever I am. And oftentimes we'll see... Uh, People stop in the streets at 11 o'clock in the morning. But Anzac Day is a day recognised to mark those who have gone, those who have put their lives and their families on the line for yours and my um, privilege, the privilege that we have. But I see that happening 365 days a year. But the focus is the one day that we can all remember without question. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but the reality for me is Anzac Day is recognised globally as a, uh, a commemoration. It's, it's commemorated in France. Um, the Turks understand our need for Anzac Day commemorations. Gallipoli is certainly closed this year. Um, so there are all these things that are happening in the past that aren't happening in our not-too-distant future. And we need to make sure that we've had a part to play in all of that. Well, Warren, uh, Nathan, thanks very much for sharing your thoughts with us. I'm Peter Ferenza, and this has been QPT TV.